CPI data is taking center stage these days because it is a single most important metric that the Bank of Canada looks at to figure out where they will take interest rates. There is a fear that rates will have to go to 10% or even 20%, just like in the 70s or 80s, just to bring inflation down. Here's the thing, they probably overdid it in the 80s and that's why we saw three long recessions after that. And the other thing that people might not know is that there was a completely different monetary policy and economy back then too, which means things might play out differently this time. So in this video, let's go back in time to see if we can get better insights into where interest rates actually need to be in order to bring inflation back to target. But before I continue, if you enjoy content like this, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so that you can see more videos like this made specifically for real estate investors in Toronto. Before I dive into history, let's quickly look at what's been happening with inflation lately. CPI actually started going above our upper bound target of 3% in April of 2021. But at the time, we were still in the heart of COVID and central banks thought that inflation was transitory and so they kept rates at 0.25%. Inflation started ballooning, record low interest rates stimulated that even more, and then the prolonged war in Ukraine and supply chain issues just made things worse. It wasn't until March of this year when central banks decided to start hiking rates and honestly, it was too late. And so inflation kept going up and up until it peaked in June. Since then, we've seen slightly positive, slower CPI growth over the past three months, which is positive. But once you break down the numbers, it's mainly due to oil prices coming down and the price of food and the price of services are still creeping up. We started jumble rate hikes in July and honestly, I don't think we felt the full impacts yet and CPI is also a lagging indicator. So unfortunately, we haven't seen good signs that inflation is coming down yet and so we are expecting another jumble rate hike this month. Now the big question is, how much do we need to go until inflation can visibly come down? Everyone is looking back to the 70s and 80s, so let's go there too and it's time for some storytelling. In the early 70s, we were getting a lot more foreign money coming into Canada, which ended up pushing our loony up. The Bank of Canada didn't want that because it would be bad for our exports, and so they tried to keep our currency stable by not bumping up interest rates too drastically. Obviously, that didn't work, and we ended up going into a stagflation situation, a period with high inflation, slow growth, and high unemployment. And so in 1975, the central bank tried another tactic by targeting our money reserve instead to keep that stable. That did mean jacking up interest rates, but it really was by going the long route, looking at the money reserve signs to see how much to take rates up. The byproduct of raising rates was a recession from December of 1974 to March of 1975. But that made the Bank of Canada scared, and so they eased on interest rates too early, which made inflation rebound even higher. I think this method of looking at the reserve to figure out how much to increase rates just got really confusing, and eventually they just couldn't figure out what was happening. And so that targeting method got scrapped. Bank of Canada didn't have any set targeting methods anymore. They also couldn't really explain what they were doing and a lot of times, they just ended up reacting to other countries. For example, when the US increased interest rates, our loony fell, which spiked the price of imports and ended up giving us higher inflation. And so Bank of Canada ended up raising rates and eventually took our overnight rates to over 20%. Having no target isn't right, obviously, and even though we eventually brought inflation down, we also ended up going into three very long recessions within a short 10 year span, and we definitely want to avoid that this time around. The silver lining is that we did come out with some hard lessons learned. In 1991, the Bank of Canada began to introduce a new mandate to keep inflation targets between 1 and 3%. It became pretty clear that we should just monitor inflation directly instead of taking a detour by looking at other indicators and still end up looking at inflation. 
Faster reaction times will prevent inflation from spiraling out of control, and the strategy has proven itself to work for the past 30 years. In fact, the reason inflation is so high today is because we didn't react fast enough when CPI went above 3%. Take a look at this. CPI went above 3% first in April of 2021, but back then the central banks thought it was transitory, and so we let it spiral higher and higher for another year before raising rates. And that's really why we are close to a 7% CPI reading today, a year and a half later. Rate hikes were probably still too slow in the beginning because inflation was spiraling up so quickly, but nowadays Macklem has gone a lot tougher with jumbo rate hikes, which is really what we need. I would say the big difference between the 70s and 80s and today is that we know what to target, which drastically improves our reaction time. In 1972, overnight rates went from 4.5% to 9.25% within a span of three years in order to tame inflation. For amortizing loan payments, that's a 55% increase in new loan payments over three years. I think the big mistake that led to the second round of inflation rebound wasn't that they didn't raise rates fast enough the first time, but rather that they did let loose too early and lowered rates again too quickly because the recession hit. That's what resulted in the second round of even higher inflation and the Bank of Canada took rates from 9.9% to 20.8% within one year that next time. That almost doubled monthly payments and set us in a series of three long recessions which probably really overdid it. So now let's take a look at what's happening so far today. Our rates went from 0.25% to a future expected 4% by Wednesday, and we expect rates to peak at around 4.5% most likely in less than a year, which is a much faster pace. It turns out the impact would be equivalent to a 67% increase in monthly payments, and that's somewhere between what we saw in the 70s and 80s in a much shorter time span. Nobody knows for sure whether these rate hikes are working, but it's positive to see inflation not spiraling up very quickly anymore. We've added three more rounds of very aggressive rate hikes since July, which still needs time to be worked into the system. And remember, CPI is a lagging indicator too. Given that we're so much more leveraged today, we're probably getting close to where we need to be in terms of interest rate hikes, and we just haven't felt the full impacts yet. At the same time, the Bank of Canada will probably play it safe and keep rates steady to prevent an inflation rebound like what's happened in the late 70s. Like we mentioned, we expect rates to peak at around 4.5%, but we don't expect it to come down that quickly afterwards. And so, if you are looking to invest in real estate, you'll want to run numbers using our current high interest rates just to be safe. You might have heard me say it before, it's not a bad time to invest in real estate as long as the numbers work. If you can get a deal with a great price and positive cash flows at today's higher fixed rates, you've got good holding power and that's what we look for in a strong real estate investment. And if you're looking to get started with real estate investing and you need help with this, our team is here to help. We're a real estate sales brokerage that focuses on investing in real estate in Toronto, and we're happy to help you learn more about these opportunities. When you work with us, we take the time to understand your needs, teach you the ropes, show you these deals, and eventually help you buy the best one for you. But that's not all. Our team also provides renovations guidance, leasing, and property management if you need it. So just connect with us if you want to learn more about our services by heading to the link in the description below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and look for us on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn if you do want to hear from us more regularly. I wish you all the best in your real estate investing journey. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.